hey guys welcome back to my channel today we are going to learn how to make the bustier top that you have just seen at the beginning of the video so let's jump right in the materials that you'll need are any yarn the yarn that i'll be using for this is alize cotton gold and i basically needed about one full ball and less than a quarter of the second ball so just to be on a safe side just have Two balls of this especially for the larger sizes if you are small extra small one ball is enough for you so this yarn is basically um, 330 meters and this was almost enough to complete the, the full top and uh, the hook that I'll be using for this project is a four millimeter crochet hook this I got from Osona yarns all the way from Kenya Nairobi and you can check her page out on Instagram. I'll be leaving her link in the description box below. Then uh, you'll also need a pair of scissors to cut your loose ends because there's going to be a lot of draining and cutting and um, attaching yarn. Then you also need a darning needle to weave in your ends. And you'll also need a few stitch markers. You can use three for this project. Just have three around just in case they are needed for something then i have this piece of paper because we're going to make some calculations before we start so um you also need a pen just to note down a few things before you begin so we're going to take our full bust measurement and the full bust measurement that i'm going to consider for this project is 36 inches and that's like for a size medium then you're going to divide this number by four and you're going to get nine inches so whatever number that you get for your full bust measurement divided by four and you'll be able to get um measurement b let me say this is measurement a the full bust measurement and then measurement b will be the number that you get after dividing measurement a by four that is the nine inches you're going to subtract one so nine minus one is equal to eight inches all right so after getting these measurements uh you're going to put this aside we shall refer to it later on you can remove these stitch markers on the side and then darning needle and now we are going to grab our yarn and our hook all right so we are going to start off with the bra cups and for this project we are going to work with the lemon peel stitch or the griddle stitch or the houndstooth stitch i don't want to call it the houndstooth stitch for this particular project because we are not switching colors so it may be a little bit confusing for some people to call it the hound's tooth stitch when they're not seeing that uh, variation in color so we're going to start off with a slip knot i have my laptop here so i'll be referring to the written pattern so that i get the same exact written instruction so if you guys want the written pattern it's already available on my etsy shop all right, so let's get started. You're going to start off with a slip knot and you're going to make a chain of two, one and two. So into the, the very first chain that you made, which is this one, you're going to go in there with one single crochet, one double crochet and another single crochet. And that marks the end of row one for the bra cup. Let's go on to row two. Row two, you're going to chain one, turn your work, and you're going to make one single crochet. Sorry? You're going to make one double crochet into the single crochet. And then into the middle stitch, which is the double crochet, you're going to place one single crochet, one double crochet, 
and one single crochet all in the same stitch now we have only one stitch left and it's a single crochet so it will get one double crochet all right so we are done with row two row three you're going to chain one turn your work you're going to make one single crochet into the double crochet one double crochet into the next single crochet and now we have reached the middle stitch which is a double crochet and we're going to place one single crochet one double crochet and one single crochet into the same exact stitch and then we're going to place one double crochet into the next single crochet and one single crochet into the very last double crochet and that marks the end of our row three so you should notice a few things at this point these are increased rows and uh, the middle stitch is where we place the increases and the middle stitch should always be a double crochet for now and uh, it always gets one single crochet one double crochet and one single crochet so let's continue with the increase rows you're going to chain one turn your work another thing that you should notice is a single crochet gets a double crochet and a double crochet gets a single crochet unless stated otherwise so you're going to go into the very first stitch which is a single crochet and you're going to place one double crochet one single crochet into the next double crochet one double one double crochet into the next single crochet and now we've reached the middle stitch which is a double crochet so it will get one single crochet one double crochet and one single crochet all in the same stitch so at this point you can start placing a stitch marker into the middle stitch which is the double crochet because the stitches are increasing and it's no longer that obvious to um, locate the middle stitch so after this you're going to go with the double crochet into the next single crochet a single crochet into the next double crochet and a double crochet into the last single crochet okay let's go on to row five you're going to chain one turn your work and you're going to place one single crochet into the double crochet one double crochet into the single crochet one single crochet into the double crochet one double crochet into the single crochet now we've reached that stitch that has the stitch marker you're going to remove the stitch marker and i told you the middle stitch is always a double crochet that means it gets one single crochet one double crochet and one single crochet all in the same stitch and then place your stitch marker back into the middle stitch and then you're going to go into the next stitch with a double crochet because it's a single crochet from the previous row now you're going to continue alternating between single crochet and double crochet all the way to the end of the row so we've ended our row with a single crochet as you can see here now you're going to chain one turn your work double crochet into the single crochet and continue to single crochet double crochet single crochet double crochet until you get to the middle stitch that has the stitch marker so we are at that point remove the stitch marker place one single crochet one double crochet and one single crochet all in the same stitch and then you're going to place one double crochet into the next sorry don't forget to always place your stitch marker back into the middle stitch and continue with the pattern all the way to the end of the row so we are ending with a double crochet so this is row one two three four five and six we have a total of six rows right now now we are going to continue doing that until the measurement from here
from here all the way to here is a um, measurement C. Let me say this is measurement C because measurement B was the nine inches. When we subtracted one, we got eight inches, which is measurement C. So half of measurement C, half of C is uh, measurement D. So half of eight inches is four inches. So there's a lot going on. We have the full bust measurement, then divided by four, you get measurement B, which is the nine inches. You're going to subtract one to get uh, measurement C, which is eight inches, and then divide that number, measurement C by two, to get the four inches. So we are going to work this increase pattern until we have our four inches here. Measurement D. So you can uh, go ahead and work your increase rows until you get measurement D. And we know exactly where measurement D is coming from. Make sure you take your time to understand this pattern very well. You will get a very nice fitting for your top. So let me go ahead and work my increase rows. until I have my measurement D, which is four inches, and then I'll be back to show you what to do next. So I have a total of my four inches, which is measurement D for my sample, and I've done a total of 10 rows. So for the next four rows, we are just going to do plain rows of the lemon peel stitch. So you're going to chain one, turn your work, and you're going to place one single crochet, one double crochet, one single crochet, one double crochet, all the way across. So these are non-increase rows. Remember, all the other rows that we've been doing have been creating increases. But this time we have stopped increasing and we want a total of four rows of no increases. So you remove this stitch marker and that's a double crochet. So it will get only one single crochet and then place your stitch marker back and then go into the next stitch with one double crochet and continue to work the stitch, the, the pattern all the way across until the end of the row. So we've ended with a single crochet. So you're going to chain one, turn your work. And I told you every single crochet gets a double crochet and every double crochet gets a single crochet unless stated otherwise. So we are going to go into the first stitch with a double crochet and continue to alternate between single and double crochet all the way across. So this is our second row of no increases and we want a total of four rows so remove your stitch marker and this time this is a single crochet so it will get a double crochet and then place your stitch marker back like that and then continue to alternate between single and double crochet all the way to the end of the row So we're going on to the next row, which is the third row of no increases. You're going to chain one, turn your work, single crochet into the first stitch because we ended with a double crochet here. So continue to alternate between double and single crochet. All right guys, so we are coming to the fourth row of no increases and this is going to be the last row of no increases. So you're going to chain one, turn your work. The first stitch here is a single crochet, so it will get a double crochet. And then continue to alternate between the two stitches. Placing one single crochet in every double crochet 
and one double crochet in every single crochet. So I am still marking the middle stitch because we are going to need it when it comes to the decreases. So just do exactly what I'm doing. So we are ending our row with a double crochet here and we have our middle stitch marked and you can see what texture that is creating. It's creating a really dense and rich texture for our top. So now we are going on to the decrease part of the bra cup, the middle stitch marked with the stitch marker. You're going to chain one, turn your work. Now we are going to just continue with the pattern. So this is a double crochet, so it gets a single crochet and then double crochet into the next. And we are going to continue alternating until we have one stitch to the stitch with the stitch marker. So. I'll show you okay so we are here you can see the stitch marker is in this stitch and we have a stitch here you're going to remove this stitch marker and then you're going to yarn over because this stitch had to get a double crochet the stitch before the stitch that had the stitch marker had to get a double crochet so you're going to yarn over insert your hook into that stitch pull up a loop you have three loops on your hook insert your hook into the stitch that had the stitch marker and pull up a loop you have four loops on your hook and insert your hook into the next stitch and you'll have five loops on your hook you're going to yarn over and pull through all the five like that and then go into the next stitch with one single crochet because it's a double crochet you can see it's a long stitch so we go in there with one single crochet and then we are going to mark the decrease stitch that we created not this one but this one the one that joins the three stitches together you're going to place a stitch marker there and then we are going to just go ahead and double crochet single crochet double crochet single crochet just make sure you're just placing the opposite stitch. Like if you had a single crochet for the previous row, just place a double crochet and vice versa. So we are ending our row with a single crochet and we're going to repeat that. Chain one, turn. Since we've ended our previous row with a single crochet, that means we start off with a double crochet and then single crochet into the next. Double crochet, single crochet into the next. And we are going to do this until we have one stitch to the stitch with a stitch marker so just repeat that now i'm placing one single crochet and we have this stitch here and then the stitch with a stitch marker you're going to remove the stitch marker yarn over insert your hook into the next stitch pull up a loop you have three loops on your hook Insert your hook into the next stitch that had the stitch marker. Pull up a loop. You have four loops on your hook. Pull up a loop from the next stitch. And you have five loops on your hook. Yarn over pull through all the five loops. Replace the stitch marker into that stitch that creates the decrease. And the next stitch is a double crochet. That means we place one single crochet into it. And continue to alternate between the two stitches all the way to the end of the row now at this point you should see your work starting to create room for the breast you can see that bump don't try to straighten it out just leave it as it is because we are creating that shaping for the uh, bustier top so you're going to chain one turn your work you're going to repeat the same process single crochet double crochet single crochet double crochet and since we are decreasing you'll notice that your stitches are decreasing and your panel is reducing every other row so we are just repeating the same process by now you should be knowing how to make this decrease
so I'm going to continue this until I have about three stitches so that I don't delay you or make this video any longer than it already is so chain one Okay guys, so we are almost uh, at the end and I'm placing one single crochet and then I have to make a decrease. And then one single crochet into the very last stitch. So, so far we have three stitches left. And you're going to chain one, turn your work, and single crochet into the very last stitch. So you're going to just skip over all this, and you're going to make one single crochet into the very last stitch. And this is what we have at the moment. This is what your work should look like. Don't try to make it flat. Just leave it as it is at this point. Now, uh, we are done with these measurements. We can put them away. And we're going to start something different. We're going to start building our bra cup upwards. We're going to start working our, our bra cup upwards to create upper coverage. So you're going to chain one, one single crochet into the very first row, which is this one. And then you're going to place one double crochet and one single crochet into the next row. But what I want to do is to go into this space. One double crochet into that little space. Just watch what I'm doing. And then one single crochet into the next space. That was supposed to be one row, but uh, it has two sections. So that's how I do it. And then you're going to place one double crochet into the next row. And then one single crochet and one double crochet into the next row but since it has two sections I just place one here and one here so let's do that again one single crochet into the next row one double crochet into the next and one single crochet into the same so just follow those holes that are created so one double crochet into the next one single crochet and one double crochet into the next but the fact that the row has two different sections it's like we've placed separately so we are going to just go ahead and do that alternating between single crochet and one double crochet all the way across the top of the bra cup All right, so we're almost coming to the end. We've walked all the way from here, all the way across the top. And we are placing one double crochet into the very last row. Make sure you end your row with a double crochet and this is what you should have. Now, um, row two of the upper extension, you're going to chain one turn your work skip the first double crochet and place one double crochet into the next single crochet so remember every single crochet gets a double crochet and vice versa so after skipping this first stitch the next is a single crochet so you'll go into it with a double crochet that means this row has started with a double crochet and then continue to place one single crochet into each double crochet and one double crochet into each single crochet all the way across until the end of the row so this is row two so 
so you should end your roto with um, a double crochet into the very last stitch so the decreases only happen at the beginning of the row so you're going to chain one and turn your work skip the very first double crochet the next is a single crochet so you're going to go in there with a double crochet and then continue to alternate between single and double crochet all the way across okay so we are ending our row with a single crochet into the very last stitch this is row three of the upper extension now you're going to chain one and turn your work and you're going to go skip the very first stitch which is this time a single crochet and we're going to go into the second stitch which is a double crochet and we're placing a single crochet into it and then continue to alternate between the two stitches so we're going to just keep repeating uh, the decrease row until we get enough coverage for our bra cup what i advise is about maybe around six rows for a, for a small size medium you're going to do a total of eight rows and large you can do a total of 10 to 12 rows large extra large 10 to 12 rows for the upper extension so that um, the bra cup can create enough coverage for your bust So I'm going to go off camera until I have my eight rows because I'm doing for a size medium. Okay guys, so after your upper extension rows, I've done a total of eight. This is what your bra cup should look like. You can see when it comes to the back, it has enough room for the breast. It's not just a flat surface. So, um, we are now going to work around the lower curve of the bra cup from this corner all the way to this corner so from here all the way down and all the way to here so you're going to chain one and you're going to make one half double crochet in each row of the upper extension so one half double crochet a half double crochet is yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop you have three loops on your hook and yarn over pull through all so continue to half double crochet into each row of the upper extension so far i have a total of one two three four and five six seven and eight so i'm done with the half double crochets for the upper extension now when it comes to this part you're going to place one half double crochet into one row hold on yeah one half double crochet into one row and two half double crochets into the next row like that and then one half double crochet into the next and two half double crochets into the next and you're going to repeat that all the way around the curve until we get to the upper extension on the opposite side so one half double crochet two half double crochets so we are back to the upper extension on this side and we're just going to place one half double crochet into each and every row so one two three four five six seven and eight make sure your stitches are evenly placed and at this point you're going to chain one and leave a very long strand because we shall need it for attaching so just pull through and leave a long strand behind and this is what our bra cup looks like 
now we're going to start working on the bottom panel of our top For the bottom bit, uh, we are going to be working sideways from like one end covering towards uh, the side. We are not going to be working top down. So we are going to start off with a slip knot and we are going to make a chain of 35. So I have my 35 chains. If you want your top a little bit uh, more cropped, then you're going to do a total of 31 chains for your starting chain of the bottom panel. If you want even longer, you can go ahead and do a total of 40, 41 chains. But for this, I have a total of 35 chains. Make sure your chains are an odd number. So after this, you're going to go into the second chain from the hook with one single crochet and then one double crochet into the next. One single crochet into the next, one double crochet into the next, and repeat this all the way down. All the way across your row, alternating between single crochet and double crochet. So we are coming to the end of our row and you should be placing one double crochet into the very last chain. And this is what we have. Now we're going to row two, you're going to chain one, turn your work, and you're going to make one single crochet into the first double crochet, and then one double crochet into the next single crochet, and continue to place one single crochet in each double crochet, and one double crochet into each single crochet, all the way across. So you should end your row with a double crochet into the very last single crochet here. So row two is done and you should be having a total of 34 stitches still or um, the total number of chains that you did for your beginning chain minus one. So for me, I had a total of 35 chains. That means one of the chains was a turning chain and uh, now I have a total of 34 stitches. So row three, you're going to chain one, turn your work, and you're going to go into the very first stitch with a single crochet and continue to work your pattern. Double crochet, single crochet, double crochet. We're just going to repeat this until we have um, eight stitches left. So it's eight stitches because um, these are the total number of rows that we did for the upper extension of the bra cup. So we want this flat side. So I did a total of eight rows upwards after creating this bra cup. So make sure you have um, a total number of the rows that you extended upwards so for me that's eight that means i'm going to work until i have a total of eight stitches left on my row and i'll show you what that's supposed to mean because we are trying to make the bra cup fit onto the lower body of our top so we have to create room for it So you should be ending with a double crochet and now i have a total of one two three four five six seven and eight stitches left from here we are going to chain one and turn our work uh, we're going to skip the very first double crochet which is on the edge of the row below and then this the next stitch is a single crochet that means we go in there with a double crochet so that means uh, for row four we have made a decrease so single crochet into the next double crochet double crochet into the next single crochet and continue working until the end of your row the decreases only happen on one side of the panel that means for this part we're just going to continue to alternate between 
double crochet and single crochet until the end of the row. So we're coming to the end of the row and I'm placing a double crochet into the very last single crochet of the previous row. And this is what you should be having. You should be starting to see a slant on this side. So let's go on to row five, chain one and turn our work. And this side is the non-decrease side. So we start off with a single crochet into the double crochet below and then continue working until the end of the row. This is the non-decrease row. So um, since the previous row we decreased, this row is just going to be a plain row of griddle stitch. We are almost coming to the end of the row. And remember for this part, we started our row with a double crochet into the second stitch. So that means this row ends with a single crochet into that double crochet. So single crochet into it and that's our very last stitch. Let's do another decrease. So you're going to chain one and turn your work. Skip the very first stitch, which is um, this time a single crochet. So you're skipping the single crochet and the next stitch is a double crochet. That means our very first stitch is a single crochet into that double crochet. So we only skip one stitch on the edge and then the first stitch of that row is determined by the second stitch of the previous row. So if it's a double crochet, you're going to place a single crochet into it. If it's a single crochet and you're going to place a double crochet into it. I hope I'm explaining it well. So from here, you just keep alternating between double crochet and single crochet all the way to the end of the row. So I'm placing my very last stitch and that's a double crochet on this end. So let's see what we have. You can see we have this extension and then this part is slanting downwards. Don't try to level it because this is not exactly what, what we want. We want something that will accommodate this brack up that we already made. And you can see when we do this, that means we are going to keep slanting down so that this cup can comfortably sit onto the lower body of the top. You see what we are trying to create? So we're going to keep alternating between the non-decrease row, which is the next row. So for this row, you're going to ch chain one and then single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, all the way to the end of the row because it's a non-decrease row. So we are alternating between the decrease row and the non-decrease row. So the non-decrease row in this case, in this portion of the top, is the row that comes from the base of the top all the way up to the slanting part. And then the decrease happens at the top. So the rows that start from the top are the decrease rows. And then the rows that start from the bottom of the top are the, the non-decrease rows. So let me just demonstrate that one more time for the people who may be confused at this point. Uh, we are placing one single crochet and the very last stitch here is a single crochet. That means it will get a double crochet. And that marks the end of this row. So far we are on row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Row seven. And now for row eight, you're going to chain one, turn your work. This is supposed to be a decrease row. So that means we skip the very first stitch, which is the double crochet on the edge. And the next stitch is a single crochet. That means it gets a double crochet like that. And then just continue to alternate between single and double crochet. So we are just going to repeat this process, alternating between the decrease rows and the non-decrease rows until we get uh, to a spot that's almost at the base of the bra cup. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that in a bit. 
we're going to keep decreasing until we get to almost at this spot because here we're still decreasing because the bra cup is still slanting so we're going to keep decreasing until we get to this point that's almost at the flat base of the bra cup and then i'll show you what to do you're going to continue working your rows for me uh for the first panel i did uh, a total of eight rows both uh, decrease and non decrease so a total of eight rows all together so so far we are at row nine and remember the first two rows were the rows that didn't involve any decreases so if i say eight rows you're going to also include the the rows that we started with these two rows so if i say <coughs> sorry if i say i did a total of eight rows of decrease and non-decrease rows that means i ended at a point when i was at row 10 because the first two rows didn't include the decrease and non-decrease rows so so we are at that point where we are almost at the base you can see this so now we are going to start making plain rows of uh, the stitch without any decreases when you get to the base here somewhere around the base when you stretch it you can see we are at the base of the bra cup you're going to make rows that run across the base of the bra cup up to around this point and we shall start increasing again because at that point we shall have reached the slanting part of the bra cup again so let's do that i'm now on row 11 and i'm chaining one turn and then single crochet double crochet single crochet double crochet and continue this all the way to the top of the panel I'm ending my row with a double crochet into the very last single crochet of the previous row and now from here you're going to chain one turn your work single crochet into the very first stitch double crochet into the next note that we are no longer decreasing so we're just making plain rows of the griddle stitch or the lemon peel stitch so um, we're going to continue this until we make it all the way across the base, the flat base of the bra cup. And then I'll show you how to increase when we get to the slanting part of the bra cup. So I did a total of seven rows of no decreases or increases. And this is where we are right now. You can see the bra cup is fitting into the space that we are creating perfectly well so you should make sure that whatever number of rows that you do for your bra for your um, non-decrease rows uh, you end on the top part of the panel as you can see here i've ended here not at the base so now we are going to start increasing and this is going to bring our work up so let me show you how to do that you're going to chain one, turn your work. So since I ended my row, my previous row with a double crochet here, we're going to turn our work. <clears throat> and then we're going to go into the very first stitch with a single crochet, double crochet into the same exact stitch and single crochet into the same stitch. So we've placed a total of three stitches into one stitch and then we're going to place one double crochet into the next single crochet, one single crochet into the next double crochet, and the story continues as usual. You just continue with the lemon peel stitch all the way down. So we've started the increase rows. So from now on, we are going to do increase rows and non-increase rows until I 
mention that it's time to stop so um row 18 is an increase row and row 19 will be a non increase row a plain row of the lemon peel stitch so we are done with row 18 as you can see here our work is already coming up don't try to level this work if you see it slanting just leave it because we are creating that curved shape so chain one and turn your work row 19 is a non increase row so you're just going to go into each double crochet with a single crochet and each single crochet with a double crochet all the way up So I'm ending my row with a double crochet into the very last single crochet and this is what we have. <coughs> now uh, row 20 is going to be an increase row so you're going to chain one, turn your work, single crochet, double crochet, single crochet all in the same stitch. And then continue to double crochet and single crochet alternating between the two stitches until the end of the row so this is row 20 we are going to continue to alternate between those two rows until we have a total number of um the rows that we did for that decrease and non-decrease rows so i told you i had a total of eight rows here the decrease and non-decrease rows between this point and this point here where we started the plain rows so since i had a total of eight rows i'm going to continue to work until i have a total of eight rows of um increase and non-increase rows so remember my first increase row was row 18 so i'm going to count 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 and 25 and i'm going to stop at 25 because it's my eighth row so just continue to do what suits your size depending on what you did in the previous portion of your top so for me, I have to end on row 25. That will mark the eighth row of my um, increase and non-increase rows. I hope I'm explaining it well. Just let me know down in the comment section. If you're lost, if, if this is making a lot of sense, and if you're lost, you can always refer to the written pattern, which is available on my Etsy shop, as well as my website. So this row is an non-increase row so just a plain row of the griddle stitch so let me go ahead and work my rows and i'll meet you back to show you what i'll get so i'm done with row 25 and this is what your work should look like you can see we are accommodating our bra cup okay so i've always been measuring like this so let's just do that Okay, so this is what we have. Uh, when we pin it down like this, we are at that point where we are on the flat edge of our top, as you can see here. Everything will fall into place, but for now, we are just estimating. So um, from here, we are going to create that extension of the eight stitches that we created here from the extension of the bra cup so remember here we left a total of eight stitches so in order to get those eight stitches on this side we have to chain a total of nine so if you had six stitches make sure you chain a total of seven so that you get your six back because one of the chains is a turning chain so let's do that so for me, I have to have a total of eight stitches here for the extension. So I'm going to make a total of nine chains. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, and nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Just cross checking. And now we're going to go into the second chain from the hook and place a single crochet. Place a double crochet into the next. Single crochet into the next. Double crochet into the next. Single crochet. Double crochet. Single crochet. Double crochet. And the next stitch is a double crochet. That means it will get a single crochet. So we just go ahead and continue with our pattern. Double crochet, single crochet. And now this becomes a walkover for us. You're going to just do that all the way across um, your row. And then I'll show you what to do next. So after this row, this is supposed to be my 26th row. Now from here onwards, we are going to just create plain rows of the lemon peel stitch. You just chain one, turn your work, and then single crochet into each double crochet and double crochet into each single crochet all the way across until you get enough coverage towards the back side of your top. So I'm going to do some more rows and then I'll be back so that I show you how to attach your bra cup into the space that we have created on the lower body of the top. So I ended up doing a total of 20 rows all the way for the outer extension of the top, the lower body of the top. Now we're going to do something different. Uh, you're going to get your dunny needle and thread it with some yarn. If you didn't leave a very long strand here, then you're going to have to get a separate yarn. If you left a long strand, then uh, you can use that as well. Now we're going to start joining the bra cup onto the lower body of the top. And I think I'm going to start off with this side so that if it's not enough, I can use the remaining yarn on this side so you're going to get your very first stitch on the lower body and the very first stitch on this side on the bra cup and you're going to join two times at least this is what i did you can join using a single crochet stitch or a slip stitch whatever is easier for you now we are going to first join the first stitches of the the eight stitches that we have for the upper extension of the bra cup. I hope you still remember that. So that was one stitch. This is the next. This is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight so once you get done joining that flat area there now we're going to start joining uh, that curved surface onto the curved surface on the lower body of the top now this you're going to be very careful if possible you can use some stitch markers I don't know where mine are okay they're here you can use some stitch markers at this point and the first thing that you're going to do is okay let me just do this I'm going to also get this strand here that we left behind on the bra cup and I'm going to join the eight stitches on this side as well so that we are only left with the stitches in the middle hope it's making sense okay so the first stitch I always join it twice to just make sure it's secure enough this is three four 
fave. Six, seven, and eight. So once you're done joining that flat area, you're going to count the number of stitches that you have below here and the number of rows that you have on the lower body. You can see we have an opening here, but the bra cup is joined on the sides, both this side and this side. So I have a total of around 38 stitches that are not joined on the bra cup. Then I have a total of around 22 rows when it comes to the lower section here. So um, what I'm going to do is just find a good balance. You can use stitch markers and just try to estimate and join specific points so that uh, you can evenly join the stitches or you can distribute, you can do some math and distribute these stitches evenly. That's really up to you. But I'm going to go with the stitch marker method so that I don't have to complicate things for you guys something like this if you see that the bra cup is not really balanced you can remove the stitch marker and replace it at a more comfortable spot all right so okay so this is what we have now we are going to get the long strand get the longer strand of the two if this side is longer than the other side then use the longer strand and start joining uh, the bra cup onto the lower body making sure you don't distort the shape of the bra cup as well as the lower body once you get to the stitch marker just remove it and join that spot and then continue to join your work I think this is the best approach and the easiest because we are just eyeballing and distributing the stitches evenly onto the gap that we left behind so and make sure you're doing this on the right side um i did this on the right side so that the joining line can be visible this also helps us to demarcate the bra cup shape it adds to the beauty the beauty of the top We are almost coming to the end of the opening as you can see here so make sure you distribute the stitches very well so that we don't get any bulge at any one point so this is what we have i have joined until this strand that we left behind for the Stand, the strand that was on the bra cup so from here you can go ahead and just make a knot but make sure you don't tie it on the right side of your work make sure you push it down to the wrong side same applies to this thread it and push it down to the wrong side of your work and then turn your work to the wrong side and that's where we're going to make a knot At this point we are done with that part and you can cut off these strands there and this is what we have guys look at this uh, for this i think i'm going to just join some more stitches so that we don't get this bump so just go to the edge and join some more stitches about two stitches and after that you can turn your work onto the wrong side and within the tail all right 
so this is what we have at the moment and when we bring our second piece make sure you have joined uh, you have placed your back up in the right manner because one side should face this side and then the other side on this side so this is exactly what we have and uh, you should be having two identical panels and when we fold like this this is what we have at this point now we are going to start working on the strap just like we did for this piece we have a strap going on here and i'm going to show you how to do that on this other end so we can put this away and we get our yarn and reattach it so make a slip knot and turn your work because i want to attach it on this end of the bra cup so it doesn't matter whether you attach on the right or wrong side i'm going to just attach onto the very first stitch of the bra cup where the bra cup joins onto this body of the of the top now you're going to chain one make a single crochet into that stitch and then double crochet into the next stitch single crochet into the next stitch and as i work this i am weaving in the tail that we we had left behind while attaching so those are four i want a total of 14 stitches five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen and fourteen you may think that the strap is very thick or wide but we are going to make some decreases uh, so that it can go onto this side as opposed to the middle section of the of the top so you're going to chain one turn your work let me just get rid of this tail okay so after chaining one and turning your work you're going to skip the first two stitches so skip this and skip this the next stitch is a double crochet so you will place a single crochet and then a double crochet single crochet you get back into the rhythm of the pattern until the end of your row so for the strap we are going to have decrease rows and non decrease rows and we shall keep alternating between the two so as you can see here i'm ending my row with a double crochet into the very last single crochet and then chain one this is a non-decrease row so you place one single crochet into each double crochet and vice versa so the decreases are happening on the inner side of the strap not the outer side so this is my very last stitch here as you can see the decreases are happening on this inner side not the outer side of the strap so chain one this is the decrease row so you skip the first two stitches one two and the next one is a double crochet that means we start off with a single crochet and then Continue with your pattern until the end of the row. So the next row is a non-decrease row. So that means we chain one, turn our work and place a single crochet in each double crochet and vice versa. So we're going to keep alternating between the decrease row and the non-decrease row until because this is now the decrease side so i decrease we're going to alternate between the two rows until we have a total of six stitches left on our row 
so so far i have a total of i'll count on the next row so this is the non-decrease row so we have one two three four five six seven and eight stitches so i've told you we are going to continue alternating until we have a total of six stitches so chain one turn skip the first two stitches and into the next single crochet double crochet single crochet double single double and now we have a total of six stitches across that means we are going to stop decreasing so we're going to maintain our total of six stitches making sure you place a double crochet in each single crochet and a single crochet in each double crochet so from this point onwards your rows start with single crochet and end with double crochet don't forget that and chain one turn place a single crochet in each double crochet and a double crochet in each single crochet and we're going to keep working this row until our strap is long enough I'll let you know how many rows that I'll do for my strap from here onwards. But at this point, you can determine how long you want your straps to be, depending on your body measurements. And keep in mind that yarn stretches and uh, you don't have to do so many rows because once we tie or we attach onto the back side of our top, our strap will stretch so make sure you give yourself a reasonable number of rows before you stop uh, working your strap so uh, let me just show you what we have so far we have done the decreases on the inner side of our strap and this is what our work looks like this is the left side of our top and when we bring this to make the whole composition this is what we have so what we are trying to do is to elongate the strap at this point so that we get the same length as the strap that we have on uh, our opposite side. So just go ahead and work your strap. I'll let you know how many rows I'll have done for mine. So I did a total of 40 rows all the way from the very first row of um, the decrease and the non decrease uh, rows. So right from here on the bra cup all the way up, I did a total of 40 rows. So um, one thing that you're going to make sure you do is the coverage towards the back should be enough to wrap around, not completely around, but some good distance towards the back so that we can get the second strap start from the edge of the of the end of this panel so for me i did a total of 20 rows as as i had mentioned earlier on so i'm going to just turn my work and start working my second strap so you're going to grab your yarn and your hook make a slip knot okay guys you'll see me switching hooks at different points because i keep losing my hooks i don't know where i place them but hopefully I'll find them later on. So uh, this is now like my third hook in the project. So you're going to attach your yarn on the edge. Still, it's a four millimeter crochet hook. All the hooks that I'm using here are four millimeter. So you're going to chain one and single crochet into the first space and then double crochet and then single crochet and double crochet we want a total of six stitches so so far i have a total of four five and six your last stitch should be a double crochet 
so if you chose your strap to be thicker than this you should have an even number of stitches at least so that you start your row with a single crochet and end it with a double crochet so you're going to chain one turn your work for me I'm making six stitches because the thickness of the upper end of this strap is six stitches thick so that's the same exact um, formula that I'm using for this side so after you chain one and turning you're going to make one single crochet into the first double crochet and continue to alternate between double crochet and single crochet so you end your row with a double crochet and you're going to keep repeating this until you have the same number of rows for your strap as the very first strap so the other one had a total of 40 rows so i'm going to go ahead and do the same 40 rows for my second strap so i decided to go for this approach because in most cases we have different bodies and then the fact that we are using yarn it stretches differently so i can't determine i can't dictate um how many rows that you have to do to get the perfect fitting because i don't know the stretch of the yarn that you're using and also i don't know the body type that you're making for so i decided to go for this approach where we are going to just tie a knot at the top of the shoulder using these straps that way the top can be adjustable to any size and um, you can wear it the way you want without any difficulties so as you can see i'm still on my very first ball of yarn this is all the yarn that's left and i think it's going to just be enough to finish up the whole top or if I'm to add some more yarn, it will be less than a quarter of the second ball. Because I think I'm left with the lower straps that I haven't yet done. So this project literally takes up very little yarn. So after getting the number of rows that you need for your strap, you're going to make sure you weave in all your ends, as I'm doing here. So after this, this is how your top will look like. Now this is one side of the top and this is what you'll do for your strap. You just make a knot here. If you want the strap longer, you can go ahead and make it even longer so that it can drop off your shoulder and create this excess towards the bottom. So this is what we have. You're going to go ahead and repeat the same exact process for your second panel. Uh, for me, this is my first one. Let me get the second one. Here is the second panel. You can see we have the same exact thing going on on both ends. Now you're going to get a strand of yarn. And we are going to join the middle section. And just do this. And then I don't know whether you want to join from the top or from the bottom but i'll start from the top remember the first stitch we joined twice get this the loose strands out of the way and now we're going to join the middle section all the way down here so So join all the way down the side. All right guys, so I finished joining the middle section of the top, as you can see here. 
this is what your seam line should look like in the middle now i went ahead to make a strap on one of the sides and while i was working on it i happened to run out of yarn and i got my second ball this is when i'm introducing my second ball of yarn so you can see the biggest part of the top is worked on using one ball of yarn and uh, the second ball is just going to work the straps maybe these lower straps and any chains or any extras that are needed for the top just in case we need them so um this is what i was saying this project takes very little yarn and uh, for this i'm not even going to use quarter of this ball so what you're going to do is to create straps at the base so that when someone wears it they can be able to tie the bottom of the top and the bottom band of the top holds onto the belly so you can see if i tie something like this uh, we get a better fitting at the front of the top so let me show you what I did for the first strap. I'm going to go for the same exact thickness of the straps that we have at the top, the upper straps. So six stitches thick. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, and six. And into the sixth stitch at the bottom of my top, I'm going to chain one and single crochet, double crochet single crochet double crochet single crochet and double crochet so we have a total of six stitches and we're going to keep working back and forth chain one turn your work single crochet in every double crochet and double crochet in every single crochet all the way across so we're going to maintain our six stitches until we get a total of 30 rows or however long you want your lower straps to be so for me my first strap was 30 rows and i'm going to just go ahead and make a total of 30 rows for my second one just to mirror exactly what was happening on the opposite side so what we are working on is this that lower strap and this is where we are right now on the opposite end so go ahead and do that and i'll meet you back when i'm done so I am done with the two straps at the base of my top and this is what we are going to do. You just tie a knot at the back of the top using those uh, bottom straps that you have created like that. You can tie them into a ribbon that would be really cute like this and now we're going to turn our work onto the front side and this is what it's creating you can see that the top has gotten more shape a better shape so i'm trying to adjust my upper straps so that they be at the same level like that all right, so um, now the next thing that I'm going to do is get my darning needle and weave in all my tails. Now, this is optional. This is something that you may want to consider. If you feel like your top is sliding off your shoulder and it's not very comfortable, you can create a strap here at this point. You can create one here and one at this point and then let them meet here and make a knot so i'll just be attaching a photo i'm not going to do that right now because um, i have to get back to the beginning and refilm the beginning part of this video but if you feel like this is not comfortable you can create two straps one on this side and one on this side and tie them so that you get a good grip of the top around your bust then um, get your dunning needle and weave in all your tails and this is what we have guys okay so i ended up closing a few stitches in when it comes to the upper part of the bra cups because i felt like they were so far apart and they were creating a really weird um illusion when uh i tried on the top on the dummy and i didn't like the way it looked like so i closed in a few stitches up here so if that's something that you may want to try 
try it out and see if you get a better fitting but if you don't like it you can as well remove that strand of yarn that you have used and then you go back to the original setting of the top so yeah i had to mention that because i may get some people ask sheila how come yours is well fitted and mine is not and yeah i had to clarify a few things when it comes to that section so yeah this is how the top looks like and i'm pairing it up with this beautiful skirt and i have another custom order here which is the red set and uh, when we turn our top to the back this is how it looks like so this is the part that i had mentioned if you don't feel comfortable with these straps being on the edge of the shoulder then you're going to have to create a strap at this point and at this point so that you bring in this a little bit and the other option that you have is uh, creating this outer coverage and uh, not doing so many rows and then you strap it up just like any other bralette like what we usually do create loops on this side and on this side and then you you create a chain and pass it through crisscross so that uh, you get a better fitting for your top but that's basically it i love the way it turned out at least on the dummy it's beautiful it's not my size so i can't try it on but i'll definitely share some photos of my client wearing this top i hope you enjoyed this tutorial um if you would like to try out some other top tutorials of mine or another version of the bastia crochet top please click on the screen um, there's a video and a full playlist of all the other video tutorials that I have of tops and I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you in my next video bye